Ja, was geht ab? Ich heiße Pava und Orphis Vorgeht schon. Foreign Beggars. Ich habe keine Pulli an. Dann, you get me. Don't know man like Metropolis. Yeah. Yeah, ich scheiße No Names. Scheiße No Names. Ja, hey. Foreign Beggars. Splash Mag. Blah! Blah! Splash Mag. So, we're here with uh, Foreign Beggars. First of all, welcome to Splash Mag. And uh, maybe you want to just introduce yourself really quick to our audience. It's good. Orphis Vogatron, Foreign Beggars. Metropolis. No name's DJ. So yeah, welcome. Um, you just played your show. You just finished it like literally 10 minutes ago, five minutes ago. Still dripping in fucking sweat. <laughs> and, yeah. um, h how was that? Like, how was the energy? How's the festival so far? It's good, man. I have to say, like... No matter what, every time we play in Germany, people get involved, they're enthusiastic. And it's nice for a place to come to a place like Berlin, Berlin Festival, where people know their fucking music. Yeah. But there isn't that cynicism. There's still that energy and enthusiasm. And that inspires us and motivates us during the show. It just felt really comfortable. Smackdown, basically, man. It was, yeah, it was different, man. Like, when you get into that comfortable zone and you feel the energy, which is back and forth, that's when you can kind of just, like, really ride the moment and just improvise. And that's when the crazy shit comes out. So... We were, we were plateauing today. It was nice. <laughs> Sick. And um, how how does like the German crowd react to like the sound you guys do? Because like especially if people are not really familiar with this sound, is it like are they like kind of surprised at first because you mix in like elements from from electronic music like dubstep? Um, I think basically because our show like incorporates a lot of different styles of music, and we start out with a lot of rap stuff, which everyone I know like Germany's got a strong rap scene and stuff, and. I don't know, like, whenever we've come out here, we've got a great response no matter what we've been doing, you know? So, like, even when we drop dubstep tracks, or, like, you know, whatever we play, especially, like, you know, drum and bass, you saw at the end, everyone was just, like, going crazy. I think it's just, you know, our show is a lot more like a experience, you know? Like, I don't think it really matters. And I've also met a lot of people that, like, don't really listen to, like, rap music or dubstep or anything that will come and watch the show and they'll still be into it anyway. So, like, yeah, I mean, it's just been great, man. And today was, like, really, really cool. Like, amazing show. Really enjoyed it, man. Glad to hear that. And um, you, you guys have been around for a minute. Like, you, you have, like, a pretty, pretty strong career. Uh, I think you're, like, 12 years deep now, or? Yeah, just about 11, 11 years. Not that old yet. <laughs> But still, like, that, 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 that's crazy. Like, and um, I, I was actually really curious to ask you this because I have the strong feeling that, like, the UK scene, like, the rap scene especially, is changing a lot. There's, like, a revival of, like, more rap music, like... Yeah, yeah. And, And how do you feel about that? Like, what do you think about that? I mean, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of really, you're right, there's a revival going on, I'd say, you know, uh, at the moment in, in that there's a lot of interesting rap music, grime. Uh, I mean, yes, yeah, specifically like rap, like, like you say, traditional kind of hip hop music, like a Hawk House. I think they're playing here as well. Yeah, um, do you catch them at all? Uh, okay, oh, yeah. wrong, wrong thing to say. <laughs> But uh, anyway, catch them next time. But um. Beige, Beige Kings, they're sick as well. Uh, Kate Tempest just won some Wicked Award, she's dope. There's a whole, yeah, there's a definitely a, a new scene and uh, a new revival of energy amongst rap music. And yeah, it's cool. It's really I mean, for us, that's really refreshing because, you know, we've, we, we started out in the UK, in the UK hip hop scene, and we've seen like grime come in and like that had a massive explosion. And we've seen all the grime kids like get to a point where they want to rap as well, you know? And like, there's just so much like young, like interesting rappers and shit coming out now. And like, you know, you know, we've like we set up a new record label called Par Excellence. We're about to drop some stuff. This we've got this crew called Strange You, yeah. and like, yeah, they got some crazy shit. We just done a track with Ono Capono as well. It's like, yeah, we've got a bunch of dope shit coming out of the UK at the moment on the rap tip. So like, yeah, it's fucking sick. If you want to hear what's dope in the UK, new rap stuff, we got a radio show we do every month called uh, Par Excellence Radio. So you can, uh, yeah, if you go to our SoundCloud, you can check that out. It's got all loads of new rap music, so. That's pretty sick. And um, I also feel like um, UK music scene is like more open to new influences anyways, yeah. like especially um, when it comes to grime elements or dubstep elements or whatever. I feel like now the UK is actually setting the tone for a lot of other music, like in different genres in different countries. Especially like, I think the US rap scene are kind of, li you know, listening more and just generally the, uh, it's having more influence on a sort of world platform. Whereas before maybe it was, you know, when we came up, it was a little bit more, un you know, less mainstream and it was maybe harder to, for people around the world to hear you. But nowadays, 
Yeah, man, you, you always hear stories about these big American producers that listen actively to what's going on over here. So, well, I mean, you're seeing it now as well, with like, you know, Kanye picking up like Hudmo and stuff. And, you know, Danny Brown worked with like who? Paul White. He had Paul White produce a bunch of tracks on his album. He had Rusty on his album. And even on the old album, he had, um, Darky was, yeah, Darky Freak on there and stuff. So, you know, for you've, us. You've even got like fucking Drake talking about he listens to what? He listens to a lot of Wiley. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, crazy. he knows his shit. Yeah, yeah, fuck, man. You know what I'm saying? Come on, bruv. Like, yo. Sneakbo. This guy Sneakbo and he goes, yeah, man, I, 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 you know, he's a big influence on me, which to me is a <laughs> mad idea because Sneakbo is, you know, one of these guys from Brixton and he's, you know, putting out a lot of hood videos and just doing stuff on an independent level. And the fact that people like Drake are listening to that stuff is, is great. That's, that's pretty crazy. I didn't even know that. Um, the only thing like I heard is that uh, Benji B even worked on a Kanye record. And oh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but um, yeah, I think like w w what what's the difference like how come the the scene is like that in the uk like how come you are so open-minded how come you are so progressive like i think it's just a different history i mean like uk was there from like and you know a lot of inceptions of music happen in the uk and i think it's just because like culturally it's a massive melting pot it's like a connection between europe and the states yeah. and i think just uk has just had a, is a rich musical heritage it's, it, like history and it's also had like a big like you know, like kind of like immigration history as well, because it's such a small island yeah. and London is like such a cramped up place that there's a lot of mixture, do you know what I'm saying? Like even from like the inception of hip hop, like in terms of like the seventies days and like there's a big there's always been a very big Jamaican influence yeah. in London. There's been a big Jamaican presence. And I think that in terms of like in terms of all the underground music that's come out of UK, like that's had a big influence, you know, everything from like, you know, the rap shit, garage, drum and bass, all of that stuff, you know what I'm saying? And like drum, like Jamaican music is you know that's that's like you know that's a forefather for hip-hop in many respects yeah. as well so it's like you know it's very deeply ingrained there and also like the electronic music the acid culture that yeah. you know acid house and that shit all started there and that you know when all the acid house shit ha was happening it was all happening on sound systems it was happening on the same sy sound systems that all the fucking dub reggae shit was happening so of course everyone's going to be getting high together and fucking yeah. mixing it up so you know it's you know it's just, it's just been a big culture of shit you know and punk music and rock and roll music is like you know so I think that like this with the in the wake of this big explosion of EDM people are looking for like the origins of a lot of this yeah. stuff as well and you know the the sort of uh, you know the kids are looking deeper the American people that may have gone to a big rave and been exposed to this yeah. music they, they you know they, they look for the roots of that and they actually find out that you know what they're listening to has come from maybe two or three different subgenres of UK music and so yeah I think it's, it's good it's 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 an interesting time, I think, you know, people... You know, like, some people might go, like, go to, like, a stage and see Andy C, and they're wondering what this fast dubstep is, and, um, yeah. and they look at it, and they realise that you've been putting out fucking drum and bass and jungle records for 21, yeah. 22 years now. So it's like, you know, it's amazing, it's amazing. Yeah, I talked to um, Waldo earlier today, who works yeah. with Sango from Selection, yeah. and um, it was funny, because, like, while I was preparing the interview, I read, like, a bunch of interviews from the States, but also, like, from Europe, and if you read like the interviews from the states, they were always referring to like the selection sound as being EDMs or, or like electronic yeah. music. What, but like whereas in Germany, people would say like, nah, that's rap music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's like I feel like, especially in the UK, like the boundaries are getting like blurrier and blurrier. Yeah. Which I think a lot, a lot more people are open to like collaborating now as well, which is a which is a massive yeah. influence on like you know in in music culture in general. You know, but like, I mean, the whole, the whole like EDM thing is, I don't know, like that term in itself just doesn't make sense to me anyway, because yeah. it's just like, pff, if you make music on a computer, like <laughs> if it's been recorded through any kind of like computer, you know, like, pff, and so you can it, dance to it, it's yeah. EDM, you know, so, so. I, you know, I don't know, man, but I, at the same time, man, it's just good that there's such a huge selection of music to listen to that, like, if you're not into some shit, like, you know, like half the stuff that's out, like I haven't even fucking heard it because I know what I want to listen to and I just like, it's easy to find what you need, you know? So, yeah, it's, I think it's a great thing, man. And um, talking about uh, EDM and, and like, especially the, the scene in America, um, you guys signed to a uh, Deadmau5 label. And um, how, how did that, like, work? Because obviously there were, like, some people that were like, ah, I, I'm, I'm not sure how to feel about this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for us, it was interesting because, like, we had been working on this project with Noisia, the I Am Legion project for a while, and like they showed interest in that, you know, from early. And then like the album got pushed back, so they hit us up, we're just like, look, like why don't you guys just release an EP? Yeah. So we already had a bunch of tracks that we'd done with like Kid Knievel, like with a few yeah. other people. 
and like we just like did a few more. We went in the office and we played it to them, and they just, they just loved it, you know. Yeah. And for us, it was just like cool. Like if you guys are into this sound, like you know, we we pushed like we tried to promote like as many. We always tried to promote like producers that we really respect you know so we worked with like blue daisy on there kick and evil like alex perez like you know whatever whatever and you know we also like you know try to like you know put some dubstep tracks in there some drum and bass in there and i don't know i think i think it was well received i, I don't know how good a fit it was in the end but at the end of the day like that was a massive step for us and you know in getting us like known across the world and like you know we we still do what we want to do we've always been that those kind of guys and no matter what label that we go on like we're gonna do our thing so it's just the way it is, really. Definitely, yeah. Um, and there's like, I just have to ask because it's like interesting story. I think, um, how did you guys end up uh, linking up with uh, Skrillex? Um, I actually had some immigration issues um, in England, and uh, basically they turned me away at the border, and I was living Shit. there, so I had to leave. So, in terms of like keeping a band together and keeping all the like European touring happening. I moved to Groningen to live with the Noisier guys because yeah. they had their place there. So I was living with Noisier and then Sonny came over and to make some tracks with them because he, he did a whole Sonny Moore album and then they shelved it. So he came here to do an electronic album. Yeah. So he just moved and we just moved over at the same time. He really vibes out with Noisier and then, you know, he went away to work with a couple of other people and came back and decided he's going to do the whole album with Noisier. Yeah. So we just ended up living together in Walter, Noisier's Crazy. manager's house. So yeah. this is before the whole Skrillex shit popped up. I mean, like, I remember like sitting with him in the cinema and he had yeah. like 2,000 followers on Twitter and <laughs> shit. And we're like, yeah, we're in the cinema, all of this shit or whatever. <laughs> so we did some stuff. He did a whole album with Noisier and um, that in fact got shelved as well. So I did a couple of tracks with him on that. Yeah. And um, basically because of whatever complications, that shit got shelved. And he was also making, you know, the stuff on, uh, for his first EP, the Scary Monsters EP yeah. at the same time. That came out. We had a track on there, and that's it. Really, it's just fucking. You know what I'm saying? Just like like we meet anybody else, kicking it. Oh, you're making tunes. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. You know. So it's just like a real normal, organic friendship. And then yeah. we made some bangers. Like he hit me up, and he was like, "Yo, I got this beat." Because I introduced him to Flux Pavilion yeah. and Schism yeah. and Bear Noise and all of these guys. Yeah. So he started making a track with Bear Noise, and then they sent it to me in Dubai. And I was like, "Yeah, fuck." We wrote some raps and recorded it. Sent it to Metropolis. He was in London, recorded it. Sent it back to fucking Sunny in L.A. And that's why we did the intro, you know what I mean? LA, London, Dubai, that's yeah. why we did the whole fucking thing. So, yeah, and that's how it came about, just, you know. And then he fucking blew, and then we went to the States, and that was yeah. our first time going to the States and doing the Mothership tour, which is cool. I mean, I, you know, the way, we, the way it is with Foreign Beggars, it's like, if we like a sound, if we like a person, we connect, you know, we work together. That's how, you know, why we work with Ono or Guilty Simpson or yeah. DJ Vadim or, you know what I'm saying, anybody like Fat, you know, like Fat Cat or fucking yeah. any of the Stone Story guys, it's just like, any of the UK guys, the grime guys, you know, like, you know, like other, other, just, you know, if, if, if there's a vibe and there's a connection and we love, you know, like we love this music, we love drum and bass music. Yeah. That's why we, we fuck with Noisier. You know, we love like, you know, we love, you know, if we love it and understand it, then we want to respect the art form and make a, you know, a correct collaboration. Yeah. And that's how it happens, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, it's a crazy story, man. Um, but uh, it's a really fucking normal yeah. story, I think. No, I mean, I mean, like, I, I was, I was, Crazy, no, I was referring to uh, yeah, yeah. the immigration law thing. Oh yeah, yeah, fuck that shit, man. I lived in yeah. Berlin, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was in Berlin, gewohnt for three Monate auf Kreuzberg, you know, Gneisenaustrasse, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Gneisenaustrasse, yeah. sick. So Berlin gave me some love. So Thank you, you. You do speak German, huh? Yeah, I speak Deutsch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have my school learned for three years, thirteen, I'm sixteen, so I can't ambition. Krass, it's yeah. ziemlich gut. Ziemlich gut. Yeah. Ziemlich gut, yeah. yeah. Um, but regarding like new influences, what you just said was like um, connecting with other people that you just vibe with regardless of what kind of music they make. Yeah. So um, is there like in, in future projects, is there like, uh, because we're talking about like the renaissance of like UK rap, is there like new influences that you're like picking up right now? Or? Yo, for me, there's a whole bunch of fucking new rappers, yeah. which are just driving me nuts, you know what I'm saying, yeah. from England. Day, that this new guy. I mean, we're, all, we're just excited about music, you know, always, and uh, you know that re that's reflected in the in the whole output the, with the you know with the releases, yeah. with the radio show, with the show, with the, you know with our, all our energy. And like, just the other day, he showed me uh, this new guy, Ocean. Ocean. Yeah, some kid from Brighton called Ocean Wisdom spits like a fucking animal. You know what I'm saying? Like, check out Ono Capono if you like hip hop. Ono Capono is just yeah. blowing my fucking mind right now. You know, but like. Problem Child just put out an album, sick album, man. Right off the radar, really, really good UK rap music. You know, I think, I think one of the craziest collabs that we did recently is this guy called Eprom, who's a producer from Portland. 
And yeah, man, we've just been a fan of his for fucking ages. And then we decided we're gonna go and record a bunch of music in LA with Alex Perez. Yeah. And we just hit him up. We're like, yo, bruv, we're gonna be here. Come through, man, connect. And he just came through and it's just like, it's just people are people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for us, it was like, it's mind blowing that he probably be like, yo, I know your shit, yeah, let's fuck with this, you know? Like, Sick, yeah. but it's just the way it is, you know? Like, yeah, man. Yeah, check it out, it's coming, man. It's a fucking crazy tune. But so, you, you, like, I, I can tell you're really like into like new stuff, which is like remarkable because a lot of people are always like, nah, we have our thing, like we have our lane and we feel comfortable in it. Yeah, yeah. But this is like really cool that you dig new stuff. And you, so you, you were talking about the label, you have the radio show, so yeah. sad. Um, like the plan to, to support new talents yeah yeah exactly just like the the various strains of music that we all love you know and like we just want to put out like real dope re real dope releases and push artists that like we f we really feel that you know we respect and we rate and yeah man i mean real excited about that you know it's just it's good to have a platform again we used to have a record label back in the day that pushed a lot of like uk hip-hop den of records and it's like now we're branching out a little bit and you know doing what we do which is essentially trying to like push the boundaries and like find like you know just yeah i mean we just yeah, we've got some dope stuff coming up, man. Part excellence, man. It's going to be a sick label, man. So, yeah. And um, regarding your own stuff, so like anything new from you guys coming up, like directly? Yeah, yeah we've got like a brand new single about to drop, which uh, features, uh, it's called, um, it's called Leng. Is it called, are we still yeah, calling it Leng? We don't know, no, no. <laughs> but the EP's called Modus. Modus. Yeah, 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 my bad. My EP's called Modus. Called Modus. Yeah. EP's called Modus. It's like got production with um, Alex Perez and yeah. Eprom. And we just like premiered like one of the tracks like for the first time tonight, yeah. which went down fucking sick. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. We're real, we're real excited about it, and that's gonna come out in like mid September. Yeah. And then we've also another, got like a, yeah, there was another rap EP coming out with this uh, production from a guy called Raf Riley. Uh, he's another really, really sick producer from London. Um, been a fan of for a while. <clears throat> and then we got uh, Peak Season, which is uh, the new kind of mix of VIPs and remixes uh, across the board. Just, just right. the new Foreign Beggars mixtapes coming yeah. out in November. Yeah, we've got a whole bunch of shit on there. Like, yeah, that's the new shit. And um, regarding touring, is it, uh, what, what's coming up? Like, I know you guys are touring like the States a lot also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to go back out there in like mid-September. But, um, you know, we've done like pretty much since March, we've been on the road like virtually Great. every weekend, man. And we've got like a little bit of time off. Um, we've got a few shows coming up. We're going to go to Southeast Asia, which is going to be real sick. Whoa. You know, gonna hit up like Japan, Singapore, you know, Indonesia, and then like gonna go to Australia, India, China. Yeah. Uh, then we do yeah. Then we do Stereosonic straight after that, which is a festival we've done for like a couple of times. It's an amazing festival where you travel all over, do the major cities, and uh, that's 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 a crazy festival. And then we're gonna we're gonna take some time off at the beginning of the year and work on some new music, and like you know, with this this last year we kind of like we uh we because we made a new group with noisy called i'm legion we've been kind of focusing on that for a while but like that's that that part of it has kind of come to like a close for the minute and now we're going to be back on some foreign beggar stuff so like yeah just real excited to get back in the studio and like you know really like push push what we want to do and you know next year's going to be real interesting we've got a lot of dope stuff coming out next year so nice. yeah well yeah thanks so much for stopping by today and we hope to see you soon again yeah. right <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely coming from a small city, um, you have to have imagination. And like you said, we talked a little bit about that just a second ago, but you have to have an imagination because if you're not, if you don't, it's a dead end road, you know. We got some shit for y'all. Y'all think y'all slick? Hating ass old niggas, man. <laughs>